Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cafe Euro 2020 coverage of the second semi final. Tonight, England will take on Denmark for a spot in the final against Italy. And just a quick recap of what happened last night. We got to witness probably one of the most entertaining 1 1 draws in the, the Euro 2020 so far. And it ended in a penalty shootout going in favor of Italy. So, uh, now, just speaking of Italy, the English players are now flying from Rome back to their home ground in Wembley to take on Denmark. A lot of pressure on England for uh, coming into this because I'm sure uh, most of the English supporters are assuming this as a victory for them. So, uh, just after be beating Ukraine 4-0, they'll be coming into this game with a lot of confidence and um, they'll be playing Denmark, who have been um, quoted the underdogs of the tournament. However, Kasper Heimud uh, disagrees with that statement, the manager of Denmark. He says, my, my squad is no underdog. Like We're not inferior to England. We're not inferior to any side. Uh, the, the, they, they didn't just get placed into the semi-finals. They worked towards it and they reached the semi-finals. Even though their tournament started off with them losing uh, Ericsson, but since then, this squad has just been getting better and better and better. And uh, now here we are in the semi-finals against England in Wembley. 60,000 fans will be cheering for England tonight. So they have a lot of pressure coming into this. England have everything to lose tonight. Denmark have nothing to lose. So, Addy, <clears throat> on that note, if Denmark have nothing to lose tonight, can you tell the viewers what Denmark's squad needs to do to get a win tonight? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> it uh, has to be said that Denmark is one of the success stories of this tournament. You know, in their uh, first game, they lost their first game to Finland. Uh, it was um, a great trauma for all of the players to see, you know, their best player, one of the uh, best friends uh, be off the pitch due to cardiac arrest. But I would say that uh, they have come back strong in their next game. Uh, they narrowly lost to Belgium 2-1 and we all know how great a side Belgium is. Uh, they then went on to score four goals against Russia. They scored four goals against Wales and uh, obviously edged over uh, Czech Republic 2-1. So yes, this side uh, is doing very well considering the fact that they have uh, their veteran and uh, one of their best players off the pitch. And uh, as far as uh, the keys to victory go, I think that um, a lot of owners will be on uh, two, three players. Uh, first of all, I think there will be a lot of uh, owners on their front three players. Obviously, uh, Dolberg has had uh, a great performance in the knockout stages. Um, he scored three goals um, in his last two games, two against, I believe, uh, Wales and obviously one against uh, Czech Republic last game. Uh, along with him, I think that uh, Hoiberg, uh, their uh, midfielder, he had a great game against uh, Czech. And um, I think a lot of owners will be on their front three on uh, Hoiberg, obviously the captain, the centre-back and uh, obviously Dolberg. So, yes, I think uh, their key to victories is um, just sticking to the tactics, sticking to their formation, the 3-4-2-1. They seem to have found good form with it. They've scored... Uh, uh, obviously, an interesting fact for our viewers, Denmark has scored, uh, the front three of Denmark has scored 11 goals, which is more than uh, the amount of goals Denmark has scored in any Euros. So, I think that they should uh, keep on backing themselves, stick to the strategies they have and uh, just believe and uh, do it. Because uh, whether they win or lose, it's an uh, extraordinary effort by the Danish side. And uh, the manager, Kasper Hamlund, also said that he's immensely proud of his Danish side of making it this far. So I think that, um, yeah, they don't have much to lose. Uh, they have really proved themselves this tournament. And they're obviously facing a really mighty side, England. And I think they have to stick to what they've done and obviously try to do it even better. Stick with the 3 4 2 one um, you know, continue supplying those balls up front and uh, getting in behind, especially for Dolberg. And yeah, I think that um, their key to victory is just uh, sticking to what they've done in the last two group stages because they have played exceptional football in their last two knockout stages. Wonderful, Aditya. I do agree. This uh, front trio of Denmark have been looking really dangerous. And uh, if I may uh, add another key to victory for Denmark, that is... Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't want to see like whole of Denmark's defense marking Harry Kane. Like I think even putting two men on Harry Kane is kind of a waste. Uh, we've seen this happen when uh, the weaker teams play Portugal. They usually put a lot of defense emphasis on Cristiano Ronaldo. If you're doing that, you're leaving the rest of the players open and letting and uh, just a lot more space for other players to open up. And that's known as the Ronaldo effect. Kane is coming into this game pretty hot. He has three goals to his name. He's three away from getting another bo- golden boot to his name. So I'm sure he'll be out tonight to poach. He'll he may just go for his hat trick, but I think it's very important that the Danish. Uh, obviously, focus on Kane, but more importantly, focus on his support system. Focus on Sterling. Focus on Sancho. Take down Rice. Take down Phillips. These are the players that help Harry Kane get his goals. So that's another very important thing I think Denmark um, must do coming into this game. And uh, so, Addy, uh, we threw light on Denmark's pretty attacking formation. Uh, as Casper as Casper said, uh, Denmark are no underdogs. They don't see themselves below England. They don't because if they're in the semi-finals, they're here to attack with this 3-4-2-1 formation. And uh, we saw England go for a 4-2-3-1 against Ukraine, and that formation got them a lot of success. So, my question to you, Adi, is: uh, Does do England stick with this, or do they go back to their uh, 3-4-3, which gave them success against Germany? Yes, uh, I mean they do have a dilemma to face because I I believe they started off the tournament with four three three. They switched to four two three one in their final uh, group game, and uh, obviously they went with the three four three against Germany and then the four two three one against Ukraine. So uh, it it will be quite a dilemma for uh, Southgate as to which formation to go for. Um, personally, I feel that he'll stick to the four two three one because uh, he found a lot of success with it last game. And um, you know maybe he can play the four two three one today. And assuming that uh, they beat Denmark, he can switch to a three four three in the final uh, because that was a, a formation that really uh, he used to beat a really major nation. But as far as uh, today's semi final is concerned, I think that Southgate will stick with the four two three one for this game. What about you, Rush? What do you think? Yeah, I. Four two three one. Uh, so let's they played this formation against Ukraine. Ukraine, um, when it as compared to Denmark, like Denmark is a much more aggressive side. So I feel like if they play four two three one against Denmark, Denmark will just stay on the attack for most of the time and they won't control much of the ball. I think they should look at this encounter as not another you know team like Ukraine they're playing against because they must have had such a sense of confidence, such a confidence boost after beating uh, Germany, which is well deserved by them. But beating a team like four, uh, beating a team like Ukraine four nil, I think is has not given England uh, a sense of confidence. Has given them a sense of overconfidence, and I mm-hmm. think they should stick with uh, three four three, the winning formula against Germany. For against the Danes tonight. Hmm. Okay. So um, now uh, with the formations out of the way, uh, let's go on to a few players we uh, should look out for tonight from uh, the Danish side. Uh, anyone you want to talk about? Uh, so yeah, two of them I already spoke about uh, who are uh, really important. First of all, Hoiberg. Uh, you know there was a lot of uh, onus on Hoiberg uh, in the midfield because he obviously uh, lost out on uh, Christian Eriksen and um, I think he was the most senior midfielder after him. And uh, he really stepped up to it and was a constant rock for his side. You know, obviously we were we haven't seen him score many goals or you know assist that much, but uh, I don't believe he scored at all. But uh, he's one guy that has really controlled the game. Uh, he's runs up and down the pitch. He's recovered a lot of balls, made a lot of tackles. Uh, you know, had great pass accuracy and also. Uh, Hoiberg will be uh, a really key player for Denmark. Uh, obviously, Dol- Dolberg, uh, just because uh, he looks, he's looking pretty really dangerous. He's been a goal scoring threat as in the knockout stages, two games, three goals. And um, yeah, I think that both of these guys and also uh, their young winger, Hamsgard, he's uh, played exceptionally last game and uh, he has blistering pace. Uh, he's low, got into dangerous position. So, yeah, he will be another player from Denmark that I will be looking out for. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> if I were to give a first blood prediction tonight, it would go to Dolberg, not Kane. So, mm-hmm. uh, 
my players to look out for tonight i'm going to go with the english defenders harry maguire and luke shaw because uh, let's see uh, england are yet to concede this euro uh, uh, of course pinkford has been great in goal but uh, maguire and uh, shaw are another reason are a huge reason why they've been uh, having so many clean sheets and uh, maguire has been able to sneak a goal or two so he does have the goal scoring ability in the box like Sergio Ramos does and yeah definitely i think a lot of uh, pressure will be on the english defense they need to keep up their clean sheets and more importantly they need to play a good game of football because uh, let's say they beat denmark after this they're up against italy who are undoubtedly the best team in the euro so far so mm-hmm. england have a lot there's a lot of pressure on england for tonight and uh, don't they cannot take denmark lightly i can't emphasize this enough because denmark they're a hungry team they're going to strike they're going to attack like i'm pretty sure they're also going to go for uh, three four two one against england which is a very gutsy move to do against a team like that so um <clears throat> now uh, let's move on to predictions uh, i give my first blood do you have any yeah so i'm of the similar opinion to you i think that uh, uh, we may just see denmark uh, scoring the first goal uh, and uh, most likely 85% uh, it'll be dolberg to score it but we never know who you know it could be delaney it could be hoiberg it could be literally anyone on the pitch uh, but most likely dolberg so yes i'll uh, agree with your first block prediction that denmark will uh, uh, score the first goal however i think that today's match will be 2-1 in england in england's favor uh okay, 2-1 to england in extra two time after, uh after 20 minutes 2-1 after 120 minutes 2-1 to england oh so this is in your opinion this is another game that's going to go down the wire like uh, it won't yeah, close out in yeah time. i think we'll see uh denmark score first uh, maybe sometime in the first half then we'll see england equalize then we'll see an extra time and somewhere around the second half of the extra time uh, we'll see probably england bag another goal and that's i think that that's how the game will go uh, it's a very very probable prediction but uh, i think if denmark survive 90 minutes against england in a draw uh, and it goes to extra time like you said then i think denmark would take it though that's my prediction uh, we've seen this happen we've seen this happen uh, 2018 um, a uh, world cup semi finals croatia beat england and uh, like on paper england was much more stacked but croatia did it and uh, denmark can also do it and i would not rule denmark out of this one because i know a lot of people are just assuming that okay italy england is the final but i do think denmark can win this and um, i'll be backing them tonight and uh, please do let me know who you'll be backing tonight adi Uh, so i'll be backing england uh, for a simple reason that i actually did my uh, education in kings college london and also i want to back them because they have never been in a euro uh, finals uh, denmark have still won the euros in 1992 england have never won the euros have never been in the final and they have not been in a major tournament final since uh, 1966 it's been like 55 years Uh, and I'm. Um, uh, I really personally have started liking Southgate as a manager. I think they were a good side in 2018. However, in the space of three years, they've got even better. Uh, so yes, I will be backing England today simply for the fact that you know this is a really young side and they could be making history by entering their first ever final in a European Championship. Yeah. Well, wonderful, Ali. May the ba- may the better team win tonight. Uh, and. On that note, we conclude our semi-final coverage. Uh, thank you guys so much for viewing all this, uh, all of our shows. We really appreciate it, and uh, we will be back to cover the finals. So, um, see you guys for that one. Thank you. Thank you.